Hello, welcome back to Ken O'Connor Racing. A couple of years ago, we shot a, a video series, five or six part, on how to uh, port your own blaster cylinder. Um, wasn't very popular at first, with a lot of builders um, cautioned everybody not to do this. Well, hundreds of you did this porting, and it worked good. We had it independently dyno tested in Oregon. Uh, it made 28 horsepower with our head mod. Pretty good results for a bunch of amateurs, so hats off to you guys that tried this, and good job. Next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to do a set of Banshee cylinders. Same thing, we're going to go soup to nuts on these things. I'm going to show you the fast way around them. This porting has been tested in here. I don't have dyno numbers, but I can tell you firsthand, this thing screams. So we're going to show you uh, how we do it, what products to use. I'm not doing it with a Dremel. I don't suggest that you do it either, but this Fordham equipment is readily available on eBay. You can get a motor 80 bucks if you look long enough. So uh, let's get started. Okay, here's the first purchase you're going to make. Um, these are sport port templates made by John Caldwell. He owns a company called Race Logic. Um, we've tested these templates and I was extremely impressed with the output. Uh, massive, massive gains all through the power range on a Banshee. Um, you can reach John uh, through his website, racelogic.com. Um, Ken O'Connor Racing is in no way affiliated with Race Logic. John is a good friend of mine and he's got a fantastic product. Uh, this is perfect for what we're trying to do here. We're going to do some additional things besides use the, te use the templates, but the reason that I think we need to use these templates on this job, I can't explain these angles to you without sending you a template, which is plagiarizing his product. I'm not going to do that. You're just going to buy this product from John. This costs $59, uh, about 70 bucks shipped. Uh, very durable, they hold up good, and uh, they're easy to work with, but I can't explain all these radiuses to you. These were all calculated by John um, to promote ring life, um, increase longevity of the uh, piston rings. The piston, you're not going to get into trouble with these. So that's the first purchase. Um, Racelogic.com. These are called Banshee. He makes two designs. We've tried them both. They both work. This one works a lot better. Uh, this is the Banshee Superstock. Cylinder porting on these Banshees is going to cost you 300 to 600 maybe even more, um, anywhere you go. So, I mean, if you're going to spend money to get your cylinder ported, I think it's a lot smarter. If you get a little confidence in yourself and you're a tool junkie anyway, spend some money on some tools and you got this stuff hanging around for the rest of your life. And uh, this stuff has a lot more uses than just, um, than just porting cylinders. And once you get your hand on a good set of Fordham equipment, you know, you're going to use it every time you go into your workshop. The stuff just works great. At bare bones minimum, um, this is what you're going to need. You're going to need a Fordham motor. Again, you can buy them brand new. It's probably not cost effective if you're just going to do one cylinder. And I know a bunch of you guys are going to use Dremels on this anyway. And boy, it's going to be a nightmare. The big advantage with using the Fordham equipment, and I get everything from CC Specialty, is it's, it's high torque. As you reduce your RPMs, you still have the torque to cut. A Dremel's not going to do that. A Dremel needs to wind up to speed and as soon as you touch something it's going to start dropping off and it's a little bit tricky to do it. So if you take my advice, deal with CC Specialty. You can find them right online. Good company out of Tennessee, really nice people. But at a, min at a minimum this is what you're going to need. This is a number eight hand piece. You, could, you don't have to buy four of them. Get one. They're $59. I need a bunch of these because I don't have time to change tools in here. So we just load them up and leave them loaded up. 59 bucks brand new through uh, CC Specialty. At a minimum for tips, these are three inch long bits. One's a flame point and one's just a double cut, flame point single cut. Um, they're one, uh, one eighth shank, quarter inch diameter, they're about $18 a piece. You're going to need these two bits. These Banshee cylinders are really deep, so you're going to have to get in there and conventional, just little short, short stuff isn't going to work. Uh, you're going to need a spiral mandrel looks like that and some spiral rolls spiral mandrels I just bought five of them the other day I think they're two dollars and fifty cents a piece these spiral rolls I, I would suggest getting these from CC I've got some stuff off of eBay uh, cheap and it doesn't hold up it doesn't work so you, your money's well spent with CC I think those things are probably a quarter a piece they're not much you need a good scribe you can get this from CC you can get it um, anywhere you want basically that's gonna cost you about ten bucks you're gonna need some Dicom blue um, I don't know, probably less than ten dollars for that, and this is going to last you the rest of your life. You don't need uh, you don't you don't need that much. Good set of dividers. Use a couple of them here. 
this is going to help to keep um, everything symmetrical. You know, the symmetry between the two cylinders is going to be very important. So, the, I think the hardest part is not the port one; it's the port two, the same. And uh, you're going to need all this stuff to do it. So, God bless you if you're going to use a Dremel. You're going to you're not going to like yourself too much if you try it. But basically, to spend that kind of money on a cylinder. Um, you can get all of these tools for you know, probably around 200 bucks and be done with it, 200 250 dollars and then you've got them for the rest of your life. And again, I'm going to tell you this stuff is going to work, so if you get through all the, all the don't do this, send it to the pros, blah, 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 the pros, th there's a reason they're telling you that. They want your money. I want you to watch the video and I want you to sit down and, and have some fun and uh, just, like I said, don't be afraid, give this a shot. Okay, here's the twins. Uh, first thing we're going to do, and I actually got, I actually have this whole engine in here. I might just take you right through the whole thing. We'll see how long the video is. I'm going to try to condense a, most of it so it's not 25 parts long. But uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to glass bead the cylinders. So if you get your hands on a sandblaster, glass bead, whatever, it's a good idea. Um, just makes for a lot, a lot easier to see the lines in there, and uh, just something we automatically do as soon as we get them. So let's get these things sandblasted. Okay, we've got a cylinders all sandblasted. I will caution you, um, we're going we're gonna to be boring these cylinders, so I'm really not concerned about the, um, about the cylinder walls, but if you don't plan on doing that, you might want to protect those. You can just throw a rag inside of them. And uh, I used, on these, I used Black Beauty, very aggressive stuff. I'd go to more of a glass bead uh, if you don't plan on boring it when you're done. Next thing we're going to do is clean them up in the ultrasonic cleaner. This is our Crest Ultrasonic Cleaner. It's about five and a half gallons. Now, we picked this up a while ago. This is a big time saver. This thing will take anything off. Uh, we've had uh, we've had cases in here that were just destroyed, nasty, nasty. You put them in for a half hour, they come out beautiful. I'm using uh, just straight water for a solution with about a quart of uh, Purple Power. You can use Simple Green. Don't use OxyClean and don't use uh, Dirty Jobs is the name of the chemical. Uh, it'll turn your aluminum black. So we've uh, we're speaking from experience, just that was an experiment. Um, so we're just going to take these and uh, get them in the ultrasonic cleaner. This cleans with uh, sound waves. It actually cavitates the outside of it. You know, millions of little bubbles just blow off of it, but it does a really good job. The solution in the tank's been heated. It's about 180 degrees, and I'm just going to engage the uh, transducers. I'm going to leave these in here for about 10 minutes, flip them over, run them another 10 minutes, and we'll see what we got. See, it's starting to work already. Okay, we got our cylinder inside of the ultrasonic cleaner, and I'm ready to paint them next. Uh, when you use these templates, the cylinder walls have to be very, very, very clean. So that's that's the first thing you want to do if you're if you're putting the rag in. You still you have to degrease them with something. So get the uh, cylinder wall free of any kind of oil and grease. The next thing I'm going to do is put the templates in here and uh, get the blowing on and lay them up and start scratching some lines. I do have a cameraman just showed up for this job <clears throat> and he just happens to be the owner of these cylinders that we're experimenting on today. Uh, how do you feel about that Dave? Feel good. Feel good? You've had a couple experiments done here? Yep. Yeah? How's, how's that working out for you? Awesome. Okay Dave. Yep. Alright we're just going to take the dicum and we're going to lay it all around the exhaust port and all around the intake port for now. Alright, you put the cylinder in the uh, in our little holding fixture, and then inside, that's the exhaust port. Went ahead and put our blowing on it. Next step is we're going to take the template, lay a thin layer of grease on it, and then slide it into the cylinder and trace the line on top of the blowing. Okay, we laid our template in. And uh, basically, the only thing you really got to look for is make sure it's centered. And the way I like to do it is I look at the closest point here at the bottom and just kind of eyeball it, even it. Um, it. It's not hard to do. The other thing that's really important is when you line the template up, he builds these off the tops of the cylinders. So this portion of the template has to be level with the top of the cylinder. And the way we do that, I just use a, just use a straight edge and push everything up into place. And you just push down on the template. Take your scribe with your 90 degree and just go ahead and scratch one line. Just try to do it in one line if you can. Don't go in there and start coloring on it. Just make one nice straight sweeping line. Okay, we've got our, got our line scribed in there. 
And if, you, if you've seen my videos before, you can hear a very annoying noise of the camera that I was using in the past clicking to autofocus itself. You will never have that problem again. We're using a new, uh, a new Sony camera here, so hopefully things will go a little bit smoother and easier for you guys to watch. But you can see in here, this is the lines left from the template. These are completely symmetrical. And again, I would challenge anybody to do this by eye um, or by hand. I mean, you, you, need, almost, you almost have to have a template to do this, even if you make them yourself. And uh, for all you builders out there, and I know you're watching, these templates save so much layout time, and they're completely accurate. And the good news is, if you call John, John is such a nice guy, and send him your port maps, he'll make these for you. And uh, again, it's a magnetic material. They're easy to work with. So uh, just something for the builders, too. I know uh, most of this you guys already know or will disagree with, but I'm sure we'll all agree that it's very necessary to have a template to uh, properly lay out a cylinder. But next thing I want to do is start cutting some uh, cylinder walls here. This is what we're going <clears> to <throat> start with. This is the uh, quarter inch double cut on the 1 8 shank, 3 inch long bit on a number 8. I like these low profile ones, especially on these because these ports are so small. To get at this angle, um, it's going to be tougher than anything bigger. So we just come in through the exhaust port, pop in through the inside, zoom in on there, Dave. And then I'm just going to, you got to have lots of light, you want to be holding it nice and steady with something. And then um, what I do here, <clears throat> I make little circles. And I'm watching that line. Just take a nice long sweeps. Like I say, when you get into you know, the wide part of the port, just make little circles. Just maintain your inside angle of your port. And just start pushing stuff around. Go slow. You won't have any problems. If you start really pushing on these, you're going to have major issues. You're going to have a lot of ugly stuff that's going to take you a long time to clean up. So. Kind of do that until you get the whole port done. top line. Uh, I want to get to this next, but it's kind of tough to get at it from the angle that I'm in, so I'm going to flip the cylinder and then we'll grind the bottom line. Okay, this is the setup we're using. Like I said, I just flipped the cylinder over and I'm going to go ahead and catch this line. Uh, be careful not to get these things to bind and you can, because of the angle of the exhaust port, it can do that. You, you never want to get these things to pinch uh, the helicopter on you and you make a big mess. So just again, really slow. If the camera's shaking, it's because Dave stayed up last night and I think he had too many beers. But you just blend this port and just keep going until you match your line. Okay, we're all set with our exhaust port. You know, just roughing it in. We still got a lot of work to do in here and blend everything. But we're blended in about five or six millimeters and we'll do some more work in there later. Um, the next thing is I'm going to show you how to put boysen ports in this. I've seen a lot of different ways of doing it. Uh, you can do it with a drill and do it by hand. Um, I don't suggest it. There's a lot better ways of doing it. I've actually seen one poor guy set these up, you know, realizing everything has to be symmetrical. I saw him set these cylinders up on a bridge port and do it like that. That's just a lot of setup time. We, once again, built a better mousetrap thanks to my buddy Tarmo. And all we do is we made this jig. What this jig does is it sets everything, lines everything up, and these are just uh, drill, drill guides. And we take our cordless, and I'm just going to go right through. These already have the holes in it, but you just go right through it, and that's it. 